<laughs> With fuel and energy prices constantly on the rise, there is growing concern as it relates to consumption and conservation. So joining us now to discuss this is opposition spokesman and energy, Philip Paul. Well, morning, sir. Welcome to Hi. South Jamaica. Good morning to both of you, Simone and Delia, and to your audience. Happy morning. to be back. Morning. Morning. Listen, oh my, it seems every morning we wake up, we, we feel like we're on the brink of a crisis. <laughs> if not, we've already gone over the edge. Come on, uh, we are in a crisis. Yes. Uh, every, every Wednesday, you will hear an announcement. The price of fuel, $4.50. Yeah. Some weeks, the price go down by 25 cents. Mm -hmm. but every so often, we have these massive movements. This is our worst energy crisis ever yeah. since we've been having these uh, um, sporadic um, increases in energy prices over about four decades. But what are some of the global factors that, that, are, that come to play? I mean, it's easy to just say, okay, it's about the war, but, but are there other things that are impacting? No, well, well, it started when the world was emerging out of COVID. Um, th th there was almost a reheating of the global economy. So that caused a major spur in prices. And of course, with Russia, um, the war with Ukraine, we have seen, due to sanctions, a lot of the energy reserves, resources, have been shut away. And thirdly, OPEC has been unable to agree on a, a response that makes sense. They do need to expand almost exponentially mm -hmm. the amount of oil that is available on the world market. But that is not happening. Then do it. I mean, oh so, huh, oh my. So what does that mean for us, really? We're in real terms. We're looking at it now. You're right. These increases, 450, three this, and then when it comes down, it's incremental. Um, yeah. And we are all feeling it. We are all feeling it. What are the long-term implications? How do we get this under control? I mean, it's a worldwide yeah. crisis. It's happening everywhere. Um, yeah. As far as outlook, what do you see being the factors that can help to fix this and write it? And when? Yes. Well, so far this year, we have seen almost about 45% increase in the price of fuel. We are approaching a 50% increase in the price of electricity. And I'm afraid to say it's going to get worse. Mm. We, we are now experiencing oil at about $120 per barrel. The experts are saying before the summer is out, we should be closer to $140 per barrel. So for those of us who are paying about $250 per litre for, for fuel, you're going to find that because of how the pricing mechanism is, we are going to be spending well over $300. In fact, some people are experiencing that now. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that can be done and need to be done. There has to be a greater sense of urgency. So government can do certain things, and I'll come back to that right away. As consumers, we need to try to exercise greater conservation. We have to shop around. I, every, every Wednesday, I take a decision whether I go and fill up my tank today or wait until Thursday, depending on the, the price movement. Uh, and, but that is not easy. Mm. But we also have to um, travel more carefully. We, we should not be in so much traffic. But there are some meaningful things that the government should do. As opposition, we have been pointing out to them, firstly, the, the government is getting a massive windfall. The budget this year was predicated on the price of oil being $67.50. It is double that. So you can expect that the revenues will almost double. We say put a cap on the taxes that people have to pay. And uh, in, if, if you can't do that, please reduce the tax because we are paying about 45% taxes on every um, liter of oil uh, of gas that we purchase. That's one thing. We, I believe that here is an opportunity now to continue the tremendous work that was done previously when we moved to transform our economy to greater renewables. Can you imagine if the government used some of that windfall to ensure that on every school roof in Jamaica, every government building, you put in place photovoltaic, solar systems, now you can procure it now and use this as an opportunity to transform the energy landscape. I, I, I believe that 
those are some of the out of the box thinking that we need to do and of course in the meanwhile to stave off further price increases we need to look at more supplies of oil in this region mm -hmm. and the problems with russia with the european countries moving away from russia right. is that they're going to be looking to countries like to this part of the world to right. get their supplies and it's going to cut our own supplies so we're going to have a shortage Recently, the OL, um, Mark Golding, led a group of supporters to the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, um, delivered this draft order in the letter to Dr. Clark, requesting the, the, cap. the, the cap that you mentioned earlier. Uh, curious, just as a follow-up, any, any word out of that? Any response? Any dialogue since we that time? Pressing, yes, we have been pressing since 2017. But first of all, for the government to remove the hedge tax, which was imposed in 2015 to provide security uh, and insurance for oil purchases. They have ignored us. This letter that the leader of the opposition has presented has some very useful um, tools been put to the government for them to utilize to stave off this tremendous impact on the consumers. They have ignored us largely. Ignored. Yes. Yeah. I'm, th I'm listening and I'm thinking, how can uh, just employers also, I, there's a company I know and they've said, listen, we're going to stagger the time you come to work because we know that for you to come to work in these hours means you're going to be in more traffic, it's going to be more fuel costs on you, um, productivity is going to be less. Are there ways that, that employers too can jump in, Philip Paul, well, and say, all right, I know this is what's happening, let me make something, people can work from home. Do we also need to get proactive? Yes, uh, on the, certainly on the transportation side, a lot more can be done. Yeah. We have, uh, because of COVID, realized that we can be as productive anywhere we choose to be. So we can be at home. It's amazing the amount of traffic that people have to engage in. That, that is, is, is a, a gas guzzling activity. Um, so employers can do that. Internally in our offices, we can do a lot more. We can turn down or up, as you, you, you would deem it, the thermostat, so that we, we are not freezing in our offices, as, as some of them are. And uh, there are many things at home as well that we can do as consumers. Yeah. We are in this serious crisis. Um, so apart from our individual responsibility, I'm suggesting it's an opportunity now for the government mm -hmm. to use this to transform our energy sector to transform our utilization of, of energy, especially electric energy, because the sun is there. It is so hot outside now. Let us use the sun. Let us use some of that billions and billions of dollars to get to people the access to solar panels. Um, you don't need to have batteries at this stage. The sun alone will be able to drive and save us tremendous costs yeah. as we try to uh, electrify our Mm -hmm. and, and how quick a fix do you think that is? Because you speak of the crisis, there are always opportunities in crisis, right, Sir Philip? Yes. Um, we hear that all the time. And, and w when you all were speaking earlier, you said you want to show solidarity with the people of Jamaica who are growing yeah. through a difficult time, cost yeah. of living he he hitting everybody hard. So you speak to the government and using the sun and so, so, so. Is right. this a, 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 a quick fix, a short-term fix, a medium-term fix? Is this something you think we can implement right. really quickly to help ease the burden? Right. So there are no more fixes. I've spoken about increasing supplies. We need to find another source. And the government has to approach our American friends to see how the sanctions against Venezuela can be eased for this period. I know that Americans are looking at Saudi Arabia, but Venezuela is the largest, mm -hmm. the largest oil reserves in the world. Mm -hmm. And they can be up and running quickly. So that is one solution that could happen in, in, in weeks or months. Then, as I mentioned earlier, in relation to using this opportunity now for transformation, we can get solar panels here out of China, out of the U.S., in about two to three months. Uh, let us use the emergency vehicle that the procurement rules offer, because we are in an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. People are suffering. People are, are now having to de decide where they go, because of the price of fuel, and indeed they should. The price of electricity has escalated and will continue to do so. 
So let us use this as, as an opportunity now to do some transformation while we try to get some of the urgent remedies going. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for your views this morning and for sharing some time, spending some time with us. Philip Power, Shadow Minister, Energy and Mining and Opposition Spokesman on Energy. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day. All the best to you. Thank you.